Hey everybody, Kurt Davis here with Real Estate Wealth Coaching and today we're going to do a fantastic interview with Anthony Frank who is one of our first students into our program and we've got a lot of exciting stuff that we're going to talk to you guys about today. So if you want to know what Anthony's been doing in his real estate business on his flips, burrs, wholesaling, stay till the end and you'll hear everything that's going on with Anthony. Hey everybody, Kurt Davis here, and I'm with Anthony Frank. Anthony, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming in, man. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, no problem. It's been a while since uh, we've actually done an interview, so uh, but this one is probably most fitting for what's going on, especially in your business. Yeah. Uh, would you say that 2020 has been relatively positive to you in terms yeah. of real estate investing? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I was having this conversation this, uh, this morning early with some other people saying 2020 has changed lives. You know, some for the, some for the worse, sure. uh, some for the good. And, and I'm, I'm fitting in the good category right now. Man, it's fantastic. So before I actually start answering or asking Anthony any questions about him and what's going on in his real estate business, uh, click that like button. Ugh. Click the like button. Good goodness, I can't even talk. Click the like button, hit the subscribe, let us know what you think. Uh, if you've got questions for Anthony, you can ask him in the messages below. We'll get those answers for you. And stay till the end because Anthony's got a lot of exciting things that we're going to talk about uh, from someone who uh, his, his real estate investing business was probably flat for a while, wouldn't you say? Yeah, stagnant. To, stagnant. Yeah. It's a better word uh, to uh, what has been going on right now. So like, subscribe, stay till the end, leave a comment. Here we go. Now, apologize here because I got to read off my phone here. The questions, our printer's not working. But, uh, Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, who you are before real estate. Uh, so, before real estate, I was doing a lot of uh, IT work, IT engineering, uh, things like that. So, that was mainly my uh, money making field. Uh, decided to kind of get into real estate because I uh, talked to a few people that was already kind of in the game and actually. Uh, saw you doing a beginner's class at the MIG meetings uh, a couple it's of years ago. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been, been a while. And I think that was my first introduction to actually seeing you uh, kind of just around in, in, in the real estate game. So piqued my interest, and I kind of wanted to shift focus from from that uh, and get up into the real estate to get more passive income and a lot more time freedom. So, so you're working full-time. I was. What? Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. So you're working full time. Uh -huh. How how does the word real estate investing even come into the equation? Where did that come from for you? Uh, I, right after me and my wife uh, got married, or just before we got married, we were looking for a spot of our own uh, to live in, and uh, we were um, had a real estate agent uh, take us out and was showing us some houses, things like that. Uh, long story short, our credit wasn't quite where it needed to, to be, so we started to look through the rental route. Okay. And uh, a landowner came out, a homeowner came out and showed us one of his rental properties, and he was like, hey man, I own about 10 of these houses, I own all of them outright, and I was like, whoa. Really? Yeah, I was like, and it was the first time I heard it. And I was like, man, you know, how did you get into that? He was like, yeah, you know, this is all that I do, just show my houses and et cetera, et cetera. And I remember leaving that, that day and I looked at my wife in the car and I was like, this is what I need to be doing. <laughs> and so that was my first introduction uh, into even that possibility. So that happens. Mm -hmm. The wheels start turning. Mm -hmm. How long would you say, either, either how long or what were some of the first steps that you started to do start really looking at real estate like what did you do were you, were you online were you reading books I mean tell us a little bit about kind of where you actually started yeah so uh, when I actually got started uh, it wasn't until maybe a two years or so after that okay. but the idea of the seed was already planted and never really left my mind and so that was already there uh, so like I said about two years after that I started to try to do some of uh Self-learning myself, you know, YouTube videos, bigger pocket, um, things like that. Kind of looking on social media, seeing some of those outlets and seeing what people were doing. And I was trying to kind of pick some of it up from there, but I kind of got into that, you know, wanting to know everything before I 
you know, actually got started. Analysis paralysis. Right, right. exactly, exactly. Right. Um, and then I heard about a wholesale program uh, that was here locally in Memphis. Sure. Uh, I actually started trying to do some wholesaling myself. I got a couple of deals on the contract. Um, they didn't pan out because I didn't have buyers. At that time, I was always thinking, as long as I can get a house under contract, that's the biggest thing. Sure, sure. I can find somebody to buy it. Um, but I found three properties in West Memphis uh, that I didn't find a buyer for, and I had to let them go. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I kind of started um, spending a lot of money in marketing. However, it wasn't targeted marketing uh, with my direct bill campaigns. Okay. It was kind of just sending it everywhere. In like Memphis. a shotgun buyer. Right, exactly. Uh, so it wasn't very targeted. I wasted a lot of money doing that type of stuff. Um, and then when I got one of the local wholesaler uh, coaching programs here in, in town, uh, sure, I got more directed, um, more a lot more information uh, came came from that, and uh, that's when I first started getting my first. That was kind of your real foundation, exactly. Yeah. So a, a prior mentorship coaching type program, mm-hmm. along with online education, mm-hmm. attending the local real estate club, right. getting new. Would you say that all of those really helped? Is that is that something that you recommend? Oh yeah, doing? definitely. Um, I, I would definitely, you know. Say anytime, anytime that you can get any kind of coaching or mentorship program, whether it's local or not, um, it definitely will be a big help because you're going to pay one way or the other. <laughs> you're going to pay. Your, Sounds so familiar. You're going to pay your time uh, and effort, and it, it could be wasted, or um, you can pay somebody that's already been down that road to tell you where to step and where not to step. That's really kind of the reason why people sign up for programs anyway, yeah. is to minimize mistakes and. Uh, take advantage of the knowledge right. and experience, especially with those meeting meetings too. Um, I, any any local REI uh, club that's in whatever city that you're in, I would say go there you know, just for networking purposes. Now, when you started up, <clears throat> when you really kind of started getting going, when you, when you talked about the marketing and started wholesaling and things like that, even though nothing essentially was happening for you, was your wife supportive? Were your friends and family supportive? Did they know what you were doing? Yeah, um, my wife was very supportive. She still is, um, and she she's always been the kind of person that you know whatever that you want to, whatever you're going to roll with, I'm rolling with you. So uh, it's always been a big help. My family and friends are always being very supportive too. I kind of anybody that's not very supportive or not just in my circle, I cut them out real quick. So you have to <laughs> get rid of that negative energy. Yeah, that's the last thing you need, especially when you're starting something exactly. like this. Exactly. Okay, so. Things are happening a little bit. Your the education's going on. Um, so the first thing that you started out doing was wholesaling. Great. What did your first wholesale transaction look like? Or let me and, and along with that, from when you started, mm-hmm. how long was it until you completed your first wholesale transaction? Uh, it's very hard to remember the exact time frame. Um, but once I got into the coaching, the local coaching program that I spoke about earlier, yep. um, within within a month, I would say, um, okay. we did our, for, our first wholesale deal, and uh, I think it was I think I needed about uh, five six hundred dollars something like that. It was it was a very it was a base hit, sure, you know. But it, at that time, it felt like a home that, run. That was a, that was a bunt, yeah. <laughs> but you got them first, so. yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, I mean, get the first one is sometimes the toughest one, mm-hmm. so. From there, you're hooked. You, you're like, wow, this is this is gonna happen. It's possible. Right. So then what? Um, so then I just kept crack, just kept cracking at it. Um, started, like I said, doing more uh, targeted direct mail marketing campaigns. Um, the leads start coming in. Uh, I got a lot more comfortable going out to people's homes and uh, talking with them and negotiating sure. prices, contracts, contracts, all right, that kind exactly. of stuff. And. Uh, yeah, and uh, not too long after that, I ended up getting the first my first wholesale deal on, on, on my own, uh, and they really get put some wind behind my sales, you know. And uh, from there, it's kind of like I said, it just kept pushing. What would you say the key in general to wholesaling is? Would you say consistency in your marketing is that a huge key? Consistency in your marketing, and also comfortability um, with being in front of people. Um, you don't have to necessarily be a people person, but you have to kind of think when you're going into people's homes, you know, they don't know you from a whole little while, yeah. right? Um, and it's a lot different from just, you know, passing by people in the store and you might be friendly. But, you know, pe- you're coming to people's homes and you're asking them to give you 
their home that may be worth a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and they've never met you a day in their life, and you're just walking in the home. Hey, you don't have to pay me anything, but I'll take your ho- house off of sure. you. And so, um, building that rapport, getting that uh, real comfortable feeling with people, and and more so getting them comfortable with you uh, enough to make the deal uh, is a is a key. Sure, sure. So when you and I, when you actually, uh, you and I spoke, I want to say right around Christmas time, Mm -hmm. uh, our program was just brand new. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it was officially online yet. (laughs) It wasn't online yet. It wasn't. But you, you came to our program because essentially you were looking to take your real estate experience past wholesaling. Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. So talk a little bit about where you wanted to go. Like I said, when you came, when you started, you were already wholesaling. So it wasn't necessarily wholesaling that you were looking for right. from us. What were you looking for? I was looking for, like I said, to go to the next level. I was looking to do, um, pick up rental properties. Uh, I was looking to uh, do fix and flips. Uh, I also was looking to get, even with doing wholesaling, I was looking to get more consistent with wholesaling. How do I find the leads more consistently? How do I get that funnel coming in, you know, on a steady pace to where it isn't, it isn't one or two every few months, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so those those things were some of the key factors um, that you kind of spelled out in that consultation phase uh, before the program even really started that uh, really made me sign on. I was like, okay, what he's saying that the program will be offering is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, he's a local guy. I've seen him around a couple of times already. Um, his knowledge and experience will be you know, greatly appreciated. So I was like, hey, let's do it. So I remember, uh, you know, after you, after we got going in the program, you actually found a deal. Mm-hmm. And you had multiple exit strategies you could have done with us, but what did you decide to do? So that's the one we have on Fields Deal. Yes. Yes. Um, so that one was... Uh, we did a BRRRR strategy on BRRRR, and BRRRR stands for Buy, Renovate, Rent, Refinance, Repeat. It's probably one of the most popular ways that people want to buy property uh, right now, but this was a house that you wanted to keep. I wanted to keep this one because I thought that it was in a pretty nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I was getting it for a pretty good deal, and I wanted to uh, see exactly what steps I would need to take to actually obtain this rental property without having anything out of pocket. And so uh, the program was right on line for that. Um, like I said, and it was right on time because we had just kind of started the program. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and, and things worked out really well, I thought, because, you know, we we arraign, we lined you up with the private money. Mm-hmm. We worked on hiring the contractors and how to estimate renovations and, and the refinance. And the refinance. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, one thing I want to point out, though, that, that I, you know, I give you credit for is – because you've never done this type of strategy before, you easily could have wholesaled this property yeah. out to somebody. Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of people that who have been wholesaling for a long time, they have a hard time wanting to transition to actually keep properties because they're so used to, hey, I want that cash, I want that cash, I want that mm-hmm. cash. You know, In the back of their mind, they want to build a portfolio at some point in time but they, they just can't let go of that instant right. cash flow. So, you know, I give investors a lot of credit because you could have probably wholesaled that out easily for six, seven grand mm-hmm. quickly, but you decided to keep it. Yeah, I was really looking for the passive income. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could you could go out and wholesale all day long, but, you know, if you don't get up one day and, you know, wholesale, you know, you're not having any money coming in. Sure. And I wanted to have money coming in regardless of what I was doing and where mm-hmm. I was. And I know that that passive income from holding those rental properties, uh, it'll be a key factor in that. And so I wanted to kind of get started in that direction. And wholesaling is something that you can still continue to do. As right. if, if, as I recall, uh, you know, you still did some wholesale deals even after that one. You know, ma- you know, made a quick five, seven, eight thousand dollars, which you know you use for additional marketing funds and, mm-hmm. and things like that. But uh, so you've completed a burst strategy deal, mm-hmm. which is the first thing. Yeah, everything went fine. Yeah, what would you say your monthly ca- monthly gross cash flow is uh, after you pay the mortgage and management fees? Uh, so a little bit, uh, about four hundred dollars. That's incredible. Yeah, about four hundred. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean those are those are home run deals. Yeah. <laughs> so real quickly, what's your 
on that particular deal, what did it rent out for? Eight hundred, real fast, right? Yeah, eight hundred. You put it for seven ninety nine, eight hundred. Yeah, and you're making four hundred dollars a month in gross cash flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of those do you need to retire? Uh, yeah, there, right. <laughs> I mean, so okay, so we've completed a burst strategy deal. Yeah. You're still doing some wholesaling deals. Mm -hmm. but, uh, real quick, how did you find that deal? Uh, I think I actually found that one through some direct mail marketing. Okay, um, like like postcard marketing. Yeah. Okay. Postcard marketing. Postcard marketing still works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was a, a elderly lady um, that was staying in a nursing home. She was not was no longer staying there. And I think the the nursing home bills were piling up on her, and she was already kind of looking to get rid of the home. Uh, and so we came kind of right in time to be able to help her out of the situation. Sure. She really needs some help again. Sure. So we've completed a bird deal. Mm -hmm. Still doing a little couple wholesale deals here on the side for yeah. ones that don't fit the strategy. Right. And then what did we just get done doing? Uh, so we just finished our first flip. Um, retail flip. Yeah, retail flip. Retail flip. Make that, because retail flipping is a lot different yeah, than, than investor flipping. Exactly. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about the retail flip in terms of how you found it. I mean, look, I'll just ask the questions. How did you find this particular retail flip? So uh, that one came from, it was actually, I sent out a postcard again to someone, uh, and it, this person actually ended up being a realtor. Um, so a realtor got your postcard. Right. And the realtor wasn't looking to sell that home, of course. Uh, and I just kind of kept the conversation going with her. Sure. Kept the conversation going with her and built some rapport and actually built a working relationship with this realtor. Um, she called me uh, several months after that, um, that I made an offer on another property that she was looking mm -hmm. to list. Several months after that, she called back and said, hey, are you still interested in this property? And I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that deal actually came from a relationship that I had built with a realtor. Sure. Now, that's, it's, it, that's interesting because I know that a lot of realtors naturally will not work with wholesalers mm -hmm. uh, just because of the nature of wholesaling in general. Why do you think she was interested in working with you? I think a lot of it is all about relationship building. Um, just with anything else, just like um, you know, relationship building with your mentor, relationship building with uh, home home uh, sellers, relationship building with uh, realtors. Anybody you come in contact with, you never know how you can be able to help them and how they can be able to help you. So you always want to come off as a, a positive person, uh, bring that high energy to every relationship that you encounter, uh, and good things are happen for you. I'd say, your really feel that. I'd say your relationship with uh, the safety is probably pretty good now because you have successfully purchased and closed on a couple Two deals. Properties. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's fantastic. I mean, those are the kind of relationships you want because essentially she brought you off market homes that mm -hmm. were about to be listed. Right. I mean, those are, th that's like gold right now. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, before we get into any more details about the property, something else in your life happened right as this deal was happening. Yeah. Um, Do you want to share? Yeah, I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I said, the onset of the, of the interview, um, my, my primary uh, career was in uh, IT engineering. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And uh, right around the pandemic uh, time, and uh, so I come to start doing a lot of layoffs, and I, I got caught up in that layoff period. Um, and right after that, maybe it was a great story. Really, uh, I had the I had the at home interview over the phone where we had the uh, uh, the layoff notification. Thirty minutes after that phone call, the realtor that I spoke about a few minutes ago called me and said, "Hey, are you still interested in this property over on X Y Z?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, so it, it it happened really just like that. Now. That's incredible. Yeah. I don't know if it's karma, <laughs> if it was meant to be or what, but it sure sounds like it. Uh, another side note on that too was that you know I'm, I'm not really I'm not really a big person on saying hey look what I did or this is how much I made off or something. Sure. I, I really want to promote like the services that you know we were able to help people with because if I go on a, a car dealership or I go you know get my car fixed or if I go to get a service, I would hate to go in there and say, and the plumber say, hey, I made $50,000 off of this guy. Yeah. You know, I, it, it's just a bad look to me, you know. Sure. Uh, pe people do what they want to do, but it's just not my style. But Sure. Um, I was making a six-figure job. Yeah. Uh, uh, there, and with this retail flip. That, that, to go I, from that to being laid off, that's going to be real tough. Yeah. Um, so, that, I was making like a six-figure job there, mm -hmm. uh, salary. 
uh, and with this retail flip, I got close to half of that on the on the very first time and within so, about forty five ish days. Right, and not about two months. So it's like I had to work all year for six oh, figures, and then within this first two month time frame of doing this retail flip, I almost made half my salary right after that. Now let's talk about this retail deal because I remember you called me up and you've never done a retail flip before. Right. And if I remember correctly, you weren't sure if you were going to retail it or consider wholesaling it mm-hmm. because obviously with the new transition in your life with not having your job, uh, maybe some immediate cash looked real attractive. Right. <laughs> also, when we started adding up the renovation costs with the contractor when we were out there, mm-hmm. you know, we were nearing ballpark thirty grand right. before anything. Right. So that particular property... Uh, it's it, it's in an area of Memphis called Cordova. What did you get that house for? What was your purchase price? I purchased that home for one hundred forty-four thousand. Okay, and um, the rehab was about thirty thousand. Uh, about thirty-five. Um, thirty-five with, re- with 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 a little extra. Yeah, the yeah. rehab budget uh, was about twenty-five thousand. Yeah, uh, and I ended up putting about ten grand into it uh, out of yeah. pocket myself. Yeah, and that was a combination of a little bit of cost overruns, overruns and, and just feel additional changes right in yeah. the project which that stuff's gonna happen so you got a private hard money loan to close on this home with zero down right for a hundred and eighty thousand right right mm-hmm. how talk about the renovation on on maybe how this was different compared to when you did your bird deal uh it was kind of it was kind of the same mm-hmm. um it wasn't too much difference i still had the same contract that i worked on with my bird strategy deal um, came in, we really did the walkthrough, um, looked at everything that we wanted to try to repair on it. But my bigger questions were, and uh, this was something that you helped me with on the walkthrough, was versus keeping the home versus selling it retail, what items are really the big market items that really help the home sell a lot better at a higher price is what you, you know, the higher ticket price is what I was aiming for. Uh, so you really kind of pointed those things out, you know, as far as the flooring, as far as kitchen, as far as bathrooms, bathrooms yeah. those type of things. And then in those areas, what to actually look for, you know, countertops, uh, you know, backsplash, all these type, all these type of items that otherwise wholesaling, I probably wouldn't have really looked at, yeah. you know. Uh, so just that, just that um, on a job training, I guess to <laughs> say, you know, it really helped out. So, so now even if I wholesale or fix and flip or buy, uh, do a bird, another bird rental, when I go into the property versus when I was going in as a wholesaler, I was going in taking pictures, I know this is what the buyer is probably looking for, and I'm pouring up over a lot of the information. But now I go in because I may buy it myself. Mm-hmm. I may, you know, I may wholesale it, but now when I go in, I look, and even in the photos, I'm looking at different items that I didn't really look at previously sure yeah. well especially if the house does offer a retail opportunity that's where it kind of makes it difficult because they, oh, if I'm going to keep it myself as a rental maybe I don't have to do do things right. this or I don't have to upgrade it to this caliber mm-hmm. but if I'm gonna retail it I want to get then you got to go this way right exactly so renovation took what 30 days mm-hmm. roughly yep about three weeks three to four weeks yeah. so we listed the house and do you remember what happened right after we listed yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Uh, it was like a tsunami. Yeah, uh, you listed the home, and within an hour after listening, I think we had 10 to 12 uh, oh. appointments. Well, first, I want to back up just for a second, because you're in the house for $180,000. Mm-hmm. During our initial evaluation of the home, we, we kind of projected based on some comps that we would list this house for around two forty at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we actually converted a bonus room into another bedroom, yeah, bedroom. and we just figured, let's shoot for the moon a little bit. We're going to list this thing for 250 Yeah. Listed it for 250 Like I said, within an hour, we had 12 appointments already booked. Within 24 hours. It was like 30. Four, yeah, it was like 30. Within and we 24 had, hours. And we had multiple offers. Multiple high offers. We actually uh, ended up going with the offer that was about $25,000 over what we listed it for. Yes, no closing cost assistance no required. No closing cost assistance, anything. So uh, we listed it for two fifty, and the highest offer came in was like two seventy five. dollars yeah. uh, with no closing costs. That's right. And it kind of blew my mind, really. Well, <laughs> I, yes. 
<laughs> now, even even though that's all super exciting and we're high because of that, reality check came in right. time. And remember, I, I prepped you for a potential of this to happen, mm -hmm. so it wasn't a shock, but what happened? So when the when we did the appraisal, the, the um, buyer I actually did their own appraisal uh, as well through and the, their bank, yeah, yep. and inspection because <laughs> the bank isn't going to you know give them the funds to buy something at three hundred thousand that may be worth one hundred and seventy five thousand, yeah. right? Uh, so they did their own appraisal through their bank and it came back at two forty eight. Yeah, uh, came back at two forty. Which I'm still in disbelief about that. It's kind of like. And that's the only issue that you have to kind of understand for anybody watching this uh, when you're doing retail flipping is, is that when you get these offers that come in much higher than where they're supposed to, if they're doing bank financing and the house does not appraise for that higher amount, I mean, your option is to try to force them to bring that money to the table, which 99.9% .9 of the time they can't. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you naturally have to lower the price to what the appraised value is. So. Or you start over. It, yeah, or you, or you put it back on the market and start completely over. But the problem is, is by the time you're into it, you're into the deal three, you know, two and a half, three weeks with the buyer. So, uh, you know, you kind of have money. It is. And especially when you're borrowing private money, it's expensive yeah. money. Yeah. So you made the decision to accept the 248. Yeah. The positive way we had to kind of look at that was is technically we were getting $8,000 higher than where we were originally going to list it, mm -hmm. and you did not have to pay closing cost right. assistance, which that's a huge win. Yeah, so they saved a lot of money as well. So the real big question that everybody wants to know <laughs> is is how much was that check when it closed? Uh, it came in at 47, a, a, a shade under 48, 48,000. Correct. Now, obviously, you had to factor out a little bit of, and that's and that was after commissions and closing fees. Now, granted, you had to, the investment that you put into it that was your out-of-pocket expense, even if you take that back out of it, you can still say you netted 37 grand. Yeah, right. Is that safe to say? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. 37 grand in... Less than, less than 40 less than days. Years. Yeah. 40 days. Yeah. So. It was awesome. Yeah. It was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and it could have come at a better time. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, so, since the beginning of the year, you've wholesaled a handful of deals. Mm -hmm. You've completed a successful burr that's bringing you in $400 a month in gross cash flow. Mm -hmm. And you just closed your first retail flip that almost netted you almost $40,000. Right. That's incredible. Now, what do you do with all that? What do you, what do, you do with your riches? <laughs> Uh, you reinvest. Yeah. Uh, you know, you take a couple of things, uh, take care of a couple of things that need to be taken care of on the home front. Like? Uh, Tell, if you want to share, do yeah. it. So, yeah, you know, pay my car off. Fantastic. How much was that? About six grand. Wow. Love it. Uh, also, set some money to the side to cover uh, just monthly expenses at home. Sure. Like that. Sure. Uh, and then a lot of it just reinvesting it back into the marketing campaign and things like that. Because Put it back in your business. Yeah. Looking for the next deal. That's the biggest key right there because that's where a lot of people fail. They will, you know, obviously everyone's at a different stage in their life. You know, you're, we're married. We have mm -hmm. wives and children and homes and mortgages. You know, everyone does different things. But... Uh, so you don't want to buy a Rolex or anything like no, that? No, 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 no Rolex, not yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Gucci belt or anything nah. ridiculous. I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not a high fashion. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah, it's overrated, anyways. <laughs> so, so that's incredible. But the, the the exciting stuff is that you just got back from a nice week long vacation at the beach. Mm -hmm. Now what do you got going on? So uh, I just got a contract or just accepted an offer from the seller on the the next potential uh, retail flip that I'm going to be doing. Uh, actually waiting on the, to receive the contract back uh, sometime today. And What'd you get it locked up for? So we're going to get it at about $100,000. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're I was hoping to get it lower, but uh, yeah, 100, you get it at about hundred grand. it has got a retail value of about one seventy. Mm -hmm. And if the numbers go as we projected... I'm thinking about, you know, maybe between fifteen to 20000 putting into it. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be right on cue for that. Your net profit we projected, uh, if everything goes according to plan, could be around twenty five, twenty seven thousand dollars. Close to thirty thousand, depending on how yeah. it sells. Yeah, yeah. So that's incredible, man. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Uh, a goal of mine, you know, was to see how quickly could I make my year's salary. Uh, you know, doing doing uh, <laughs> real estate. It's funny that you say that. When I when I first moved to Memphis. 
in 2007. It was June of 2007. And, and I don't know if you heard me say this online or not before, but I used to be a hotel chef. Yeah, yeah. And at the time... I'm still waiting on the plate, by the way. Yeah, you keep waiting. <laughs> <laughs> keep waiting. Uh, my yearly salary, because I was paid hourly, I think it was like on a good year, 20 grand. Yeah. Which is very low. Yeah. But I remember after moving, you know, I moved here in June, and I think at the end of October, I think I made... Twenty-five grand in yeah. that month or something. It was ridiculous because I remember telling my mom about it. And my mom has a. We could go into a whole <laughs> down the rabbit hole there. But long story short, is it's like it wasn't hard to to make that salary because twenty grand is not a lot. Right. But I remember that happening and thinking to myself, what I did to do this mm-hmm. was l- like. Being a being a chef in a hotel, working that kind of schedule was harder work. Strenuous, yeah. Yeah, it was harder work yeah. than what I did to replace that in thirty to forty five days. Right. So, uh, it's incredible. It's a game changer. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what I'm looking to experience as well. I'm just like, how quickly can I make that? Um, you know, just just for a mental check for myself. You know. Sure, sure. So, so that's why I kind of asked you at the beginning. Twenty twenty, uh, for some people, has been not so great right but from your standpoint on the real estate front even with the situation with your job real estate has been positive it's been it's been a game changer for me you know it's really been a lifesaver sure uh, literally so. now the the real estate wealth coaching has been a tiny piece of the success mm-hmm. for you and i know that there's a lot of people out there who want to try to portray like hey the only reason you're successful is because of our program but I don't look at it like that way. Mm-hmm. Yes, we provided connections and relationships and and knowledge and that kind of stuff. Right. But even if I gave that all to somebody, if you don't do it, do anything with that, right. or, if, or if the person who's part of that program doesn't do anything with it, it's it's worth it's, it's not just the knowledge; it's the applied knowledge. Yes, you know the applied knowledge. People, you know, people always say knowledge is power. Um, it's true to a degree, but applied knowledge is the real power. You know, if you have the information and not doing anything with it, it's useless. Where do you see things going for you in the next couple of years? Where do you want to be? Uh, trying to get my wife over full time as well with me. Yeah. Does she want to get into real estate full time? Yeah. Yeah. Get a real um, estate license, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and make a real team out of it. Yeah. Uh, and just, just kind of grow and, and, and grow our wealth, uh, grow our time freedom. Be able to kind of move around how we want to move around. Uh, share 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 the information with our with our daughter. Uh, kind of bring her into the fold and show her, you know, that when she becomes of age, she can be her own boss right from the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What um, do you have any goals as far as uh, I'd like to own X amount of portfolio of buy and hold homes, or have you thought of anything like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, to a certain degree, um, it's really just at what stage I wanted to get my financial independence, sure. then the financial freedom, and then, you know, on and on. Mm-hmm. And so I have a certain goal in mind to reach our financial independence. Sure. Right. And then once we reach that, we can reevaluate where we are at that checkpoint and then grow to the next level. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, like I said, you know, I, I appreciate you coming in and, and sharing, you know, this personal stuff. Uh, with uh, with me, with anybody who watches this video, because I think it's important for people to understand that sometimes when people look at others who are involved in the real estate, and especially if doing a long time, they look at these people and they're like, "Oh, I could I could never do that, or yeah. I, I could I could never be that good, or I don't, you know." So it's just I want it's all a mindset. Yeah, yeah it's all a mindset. Like I said, tw- uh, twenty twenty. I I think I heard some another mentor say this once before. It's like. Even in downturns, and if the economy is going downturn, you know somebody's going to be losing, but somebody's also going to be winning. But it's up to you to decide, you know, what side of the coin that you're sure. going to be on. You know, uh, we live in a circle of life. People are always being born. People are always, you know, passing away. So homes are going to be available. Yeah, land is not being created anymore. No, right. So it's a limited amount, a finite amount of land. You know, people are always going to be getting divorces. You know, homes Bankruptcy. always going to be going foreclosures. Mm-hmm. You know, so what side of the coin are you going to be on? Sure. Um, uh, unfortunately, people are going to be losing at some point in time, but then 
also on this other side of it, people are going to be winning. So absolutely, absolutely. Well, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming in, talking to us about all this stuff, buddy. Sure. Now, listen. If you like this video, if you liked listening to Anthony talk about his story, what's going on in his business, uh, if you like this, click that like button, leave a comment in the notes below so that I can hear what you thought. I'll certainly respond to everybody's comments. Let us know what you think, and then we will see you guys on the next interview. Peace.